What's up channel? How's it going? Uh, today I've got a video about everything that you ever wanted to know about static compliance and flat toe pressures. So are you ready? Cut to the intro. So I'm sitting here with the Drager V500 and I'm going to show you uh, some particulars about plateau pressure. Why do we care about it? Why are we measuring it? And how it relates to static compliance. So let's get to the ventilator so I can show you, first of all, how to check a patient's plateau pressure. So I've got the Drager V500 set up here with just some real generic adult settings. And you can see we have 50% FiO2 a TOTA volume of 650, a TI of 1.2, we'll talk about that in a second, respiratory rate of 10, which is actually kind of low clinically, but I'm gonna use it because I have a test lung, PEEP of eight, and a slope of 0.2. So across the bottom here, these are actually my settings, and over here on this side are the patient values. So this is what the patient's doing currently with the settings that I have. So FiO2, we see a set of 50 there, and it's reading 50 over here, and that would be appropriate. The tidal volume set at 650 and the exhaled, which is that's what I calculate over here. Exhaled is way more important than inhaled, is that the 650. We have our inspiratory pressure, our P mean or average pressure, and then our PEEP. So it's really close to eight to eight, which is set also. TI is an interesting setting. So what TI is gonna do, it's it's usually manipulated just by kind of lung uh, dynamics, is how we might change that, but it's the time from right here. To right here so it changes that inspiratory time so if you see I make a longer TI let's make it obtusely ob, obtusely obtusely long let's make it really long so you would never do this but you can see now that's much longer from here to here is 2.1 seconds so usually we don't do that usually we are manipulating the TI which you see right here to give them a set IDE ratio. IDE ratio, as you can see right here, so I can change, as I decrease my TI, IDE ratio gets longer. So this is my IDE ratio. As long as they're receiving the ventilator breaths, if they start taking spontaneous breaths, the IDE ratio is gonna be kind of up in the air because it's gonna be determined by them. So a couple different things we're gonna look at, specifically we're gonna look at the pressure waveform here. So this is a, a scalar, pressure waveform, pressure versus time. So it's the one, kind of the easiest one to read. So you see the breath's gonna start here. This is our flow, inspiratory flow in. And then there's our volume going in, it maxes right here, and that's when the pressure lets off. Well, when we're looking at static compliance, we're actually looking at the plateau pressure. So you look right here, we have four main pressures that we look at. Inspiratory or PIP, peak inspiratory pressure, that's the pressure that we actually hit at the max right here. If you see the top of these, that's the highest pressure we hit during the respiratory cycle. Why is it important? It's because it is what causes the damage, the shearing pressures and other problems in the airways. So high pips are a problem. They are calculated in dynamic compliance. We're gonna look at static compliance. Dynamic compliance can change almost breath to breath and it can really change with wheezing, it can change with mucus secretions, patient biting the tube, all kinds of different issues. Whereas static compliance is something that I like to kind of compare almost like to the bicarb. It doesn't usually move fast, so it moves in different trending directions. So it's a great number to look at. Like I said, CDYN, which is being calculated right here, actually um, can change a lot from breath to breath. So if patient coughs, it's gonna change a lot of different things. What we're looking at today specifically is static compliance. So we need to get this plateau pressure. You see it doesn't read a plateau pressure every breath because we have to do a maneuver to get the plateau pressure. So the maneuver we need to do is called a manual inspiratory breath or manual inspiratory hold. And you can see when I press this button right here, it's gonna take a breath in and hold it. Hold, 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 let off. That was 3.6 seconds. The next thing you're gonna see show up is that the next breath, it calculated a plateau pressure for us. It's gonna actually go away here in a second. 
after this next breath, but you're going to see that you calculate it off how much pressure does it need to hold that hold the lungs in a at the plateau or as I like to think of it as at a static state in a still state. So your lung compliance, especially with ARDS and other types of lung disease that cause lung, cause lung stiffness, you're going to see it show up in the plateau pressure. So and this is going to slowly creep up over time and then as the ARDS decreases, it's going to improve and start to go down over time. Something we also look for viral infections in the lung because it can lead to, to ARDS. So you're going to see here, we're going to monitor this plateau pressure. So the generic of plateau pressures is once you get to 30 to 35 for a plateau pressure, you're really leaning towards ARDS. It's one of those telltale signs that you're in ARDS. Um, and it's not going to change like that from breath to breath. It's going to take stiffness over time. So what I like to think of it as the lungs being inflated and just held open, not at max, but just in a still state held open. And the propensity for the lungs to collapse back down again is what increases that. And that's what ARDS is all about. That inflammation is causing the airways to want to collapse back down again. So the inflammation and all that kind of stuff. So dynamic is the pressure held at the top. So you go up the very top. We're just holding it in a still state. So it's something that can be trended a lot easier. So let's do that again. Uh, and we'll do a breath hold and we're gonna get a plateau pressure. So let's do a breath hold. Usually it needs to be at least two seconds to get a good reading. Um, if you've got a leak in your system, so we're reading 30. If you got a leak in your system and you can see that here on this volume waveform, we got a little bit of a leak. Um, you may not get a pressure so that sometimes in those cases I just have to eyeball it and if I say well it looks like you know we can actually freeze the waveform and go through it and actually look at the exact number but I'll look at that plateau area and I'll show you that again I look at that plateau area and I can kind of ballpark it so if you say well if our PIP is 33 this is just a smidge below it in this case it's probably going to be 30 31 so or 29 whatever you want so that's going to be the plateau pressure. But figuring static compliance takes the plateau pressure and takes out this PEEP level because PEEP can really change your plateau pressure. So um, when, we, when we factor out the PEEP level, which I have eight set now, we can figure out how much pressure or we can get a statistic to show us exactly how much pressure it takes to hold in that tidal volume that we have set. So um, it's a really good number. So you'll be, you can still be delivering the same tidal volume over days, but your plateau pressure slowly goes up because the lungs are becoming more stiff. So static compliance is looking at the stiffness of the lungs in a still state. Dynamic compliance, which is down here, is showing it's a little different. It's showing it at max pressure. So, and the R is resistance. Um, and resistance is something totally different, but we're looking at static compliance today. Another number that's really interesting to look at is P-mean, and it's something we deal with a lot in the neonatal world, but P-mean is something, it's the average pressure in the airways over a minute. So what it's showing you is how many times, uh, if you, a lot of things can change P-mean, I'll tell you that. P-mean is a great number because it is, directly proportional to their oxygenation. So the fastest way to change P-mean is to go down here and change PEEP and just raise the baseline up. It's gonna immediately change P-mean. So you're gonna see P-mean start to change, so the average in the airways. Another funky thing is, is that you can also change P-mean or change oxygenation by adding more breaths per minute. So you're gonna notice this, we're gonna get a stable P-mean on here. So all you in respiratory therapy school, close your ears right now, but this actually changing somebody's respiratory rate will affect their oxygenation. Let me show you. Because we know that P-mean is directly proportional to oxygenation. So watch. Now that we're gonna get heat hitting more high pressures per minute at 18 instead of 10, our P-mean is gonna increase because we're spending more time at a higher pressure. So not changing by a lot, but it will change it. So it does make some very subtle changes in oxygenation. 
But let's get over to the board so I can show you the relationship and how to figure up static compliance. So we're back over here at the board and what I'm going to show you is how we calculate static compliance. Now looking at just one number it's really important that you know what your plateau pressure is and you can just trend your ARDS or your lung stiffness by your plateau pressure but putting it into static compliance will give us a volume for the amount of pressure added to the lung so you hear people talk about plateau pressures and then static compliance what you do when you figure static compliance you're just taking out that peep level okay because peep can kind of affect it just a little bit so we're looking at specific numbers here for static compliance so we see static compliance it's also called C stat is kind of like the abbreviation for it and it's figured just like dynamic compliance or any other compliance compliance equals volume over pressure in this case volume is tidal volume and in this and for static it's plateau minus peep but in for dynamic you're actually going to go pip minus peep so a bigger range there of course you have a bigger denominator when you look at dynamic compliance but like i said dynamic compliance can change quite a bit so on this test line i had over here we had a tidal volume of 649 milliliters. So with that, we, were, we had a plateau pressure of 29 centimeters of water pressure, and we had a peep of eight centimeters of water pressure. So we calculate this out, it's 649 divided by 21, which is gonna equal, get my numbers exact here, 30.9 milliliters per centimeter of water pressure. So this is the static compliance figured for that test lung or if that was a patient and that patient in that case. So it's a good number to know uh, dynamic compliance. Now static compliance is really hard to find a normal value for that. Dynamic compliance normal is usually 50 to 100 milliliters per centimeter water pressure. Um, this is going to fall, as you can see, it's going to be below 30 is going to be pretty good. Um, so somewhere below 30 in the 20 to 30 range for static compliance is going to be really good. But what you're mainly looking at is this number right here, just to make it real simple. So there's your plateau pressure, anything below 30, and usually in those low 20s is what we like, is what we're looking for, for somebody who doesn't have really stiff lungs. Now there's no other way really to measure that pressure inside the airways until you do that breath hold and then hold, hold the breath in measure the pressure at that point now one really cool thing this is kind of a little extra that you're going to see sometimes you see that pressure waveform we were looking at and let's say the pressure waveform let, let's say this is the peep level here and it's going up like this each time but let's say the next breath that we deliver or let's say if we do a breath hold on this patient it goes up like this and then you do a breath hold that does this and then drops off. Well, okay, this is going to be your inspiratory. This is your PIP up here, but this is your plateau pressure. So maybe this is something like 20 and this is something like 40. That's going to show you there's a big gap in between these two, the PIP and the plateau, or the dynamic and the static compressor pressure. So you have this big gap, which we didn't see that on our test loan. That big gap is going to be resistance. So a lot of resistance is going to happen between the airways being static and then being fully inflated. So it can be a lot of different issues that calculate into resistance. Resistance affects dynamic compliance. Static compliance, what we're talking about, is going to be affected by a lot of different things. Obesity is one of them, actually. Uh, it can change if they're prone. It can change if they have uh, an extra thoracic issue like burns. It can kind of hold down a little bit of uh, extra pressure on their on their chest cavity. Of course, inflammation is a big one. And um, anything that's gonna cause any kind of inflammation inside their airways and their airways to swell uh, is gonna cause that. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis is also a big <coughs> uh, disease process that will increase the static compliance right off the bat. Because in pulmonary fibrosis, those airways are just less likely to flex each time. So. Um, I hope this little waveform thing kind of helps you. If you check your patient out, uh, this is a really cool, this, this is a little extra one that I'll give you. Um, if you're looking at your, wave, at your patient and do a plateau pressure, and you should be doing this on all your patients at least every shift, beginning your shift, 
do a plateau pressure. Even if you're not thinking ARDS, it's good to know because I really like to look at this little variance here if they have this. And you listen to them with your stethoscope and you say, whoa, they got a lot of wheezes. Actually, if you treat, if it's actually bronchospastic wheezes and you treat it, this dynamic pressure should come down and those should come closer together, which is really kind of cool to see actual the actual waveforms and dynamics change in the lungs for the breathing treatments we get. So think about those things. Suction in your patient should take that down also. So anything that kind of messes with the dynamic compliance. But when you're looking at viral pulmonary infections, they're going to have a lot of different issues, but what we're really trending to see if we need to go to more advanced ventilator modes, proning, uh, high frequency, whatever else it might be, we want to trend that plateau pressure and the static compliance. I hope this video was helpful today, guys. Make sure you like. If you've watched this, subscribe. I'll keep the videos coming, and uh, I'll see you at the next one. Later.